All right, this video will follow up the uh, bullet casting video that I shot yesterday. I'm going to include several that I did actually cast yesterday and a few I just had laying around that'll show some defects. Now what you see here is not all of them. I've got a couple of sets I'll put up after these. But to familiarize you with different defects when you're sorting through your bullets after you um, cast them before you, before you want to powder coat or lube or anything all of these will be these are rejects to go back in to be melted next time all right the first set we'll look at these are pretty much what what you would consider from an improperly filled cavity and your defects on these two here will be a rounded base so you don't have a, a nice square you want a nice filled in square base unless the the base of the bullet is you know like a, a beveled base you want it to be square and flush with the top of the mold. This is from the bottom and this is, has a rounded base also. Over here, these two have areas that just didn't uh, properly fill in. Now this stuff can be caused by a few, a few issues. One could be your alloy could be too cold. Maybe you just dropped some new ingots into it and then cooled your alloy or it's not properly heated yet. Another one could be the mold or the sprue, pl or sprue plate. It could be too cool and need to be brought up to temperature so it can allow proper fill out. A remedy for this, other than getting your alloy hotter or heating your mold or sprue plate will be to add some tin. Tin increases flow of, of hot lead and it doesn't take a lot, you know, two, maybe 3% tin um, as I discussed in another video, a good source of tin would be pewter. Now I'll set this in. You can see this is a good bullet. This has a properly filled base. You can see it's square. Unlike this one over here is rounded. You can see the difference there. We've got nice sharp corners here and the rounded base over here. Another, uh, defect you'll see in your cast bullets that, that'll make them rejects or things like this. If you have voids or improperly filled out drive bands or your bearing surface, which is evident on all these bullets, these are something you'll want to remelt. Now just for plinking, things like that, you could probably use these, but you know, you're not, your accuracy will suffer if you try to use these at any, any given range. And again, this can be caused by you know, the mold could be getting cool, you know, your alloy, or you could also have some contamination in your mold, which usually causes wrinkles, which we'll look at in the next set here. All right, this set over here is all wrinkled bullets. You can see most of them, they have nice bases on them. The drive bands, the grease groove, all filled out sharp corners. You just got, you know, wrinkles in it. Now this could be from a few reasons. Um, your mold could be cold or not up to temperature yet. The same thing with your alloy, it could be cool. A lot of times when you first start casting your first couple drops, you know, you should expect wrinkles. Doesn't always happen, but I usually expect to throw some away out of the first cast. But um, in my experience, most of my wrinkled bullets come from a contaminate, or some kind of a contaminant in the, in the bullet cavity, like grease or oil or something. That's why you always, when you lube your mold, you want to do it while the cavities are, are filled. You don't want to do it after you've dropped your bullets because you're going to get something, you know, some kind of oil or something's going to get into your cavities and you're going to drop wrinkled bullets. Um, they're fine for plinking, but I remelt these. It's not, uh, you know, it could affect your bullet weight a little bit. So I just remelt them. Some people, they'll, they'll use wrinkled bullets and not worry about them. All right, something else you'll see. This set or is defects in your base. Now this isn't a so much of a rounded base, it just has a defect in it. it could be a wrinkle or something that was near the bottom. Now the first one here, this one is, is fine. It's just for an example. But the others, you see this area, that's what it looks like from the from the bottom, these. From the side it looks you know minimal, like it's not really an issue. But what that's gonna do if your base isn't properly filled out and you've got some kind of a 
a defect like this, a little void or an improperly filled out spot, when you fire this bullet, you're giving the hot gases behind the bullet a space to cut around. Now they'll cut around and cut cut the side of your bullet and you're gonna get some severe letting from that. Now on a gas check bullet, you could get, get by with this because you're gonna see the gas check. But these, you know, when you've got this uh, defect on the bottom, it's gonna prevent that bullet from making a proper seal, even if the bullet sized properly. You're giving that gas a spot to possibly cut around. All right, this last set, I, I had to go through a little trouble actually make these yesterday. These are bullets with fins on them. And what causes this is your mold halves aren't properly closed. And that can come from a couple of things. One is some type of debris getting between your mold faces. Now, if you ever open your mold and you see defective bullets in the mold, and you're, you know, like your first cast and you're like, well, these are going to be rejects. Don't drop them straight from the mold into the back into the lead pipe because you're going to get a splash and just tiny drops of lead get up on your mold face. And when you close it, it's not going to close completely. And you're going to end up with these little fins and those are not stabilizing fins. You know, what happens, you know, these things are razor sharp. They can cut you for one. Number two, they're going to affect your bullet weight slightly. And you run these through a sizer. Um, especially like the the second and fourth one, you can probably run those through a sizer and be okay with them. It'll take the excess lead off. But to prevent, you know, best practice prevent these in the first place, and just make sure your mold halves are closing properly. Um, you know, lube, double check your alignment pins. Make sure you're applying proper pressure on your handles to make sure your halves are closed. You know, lastly, these are all these are all uh, perfect cast bullets. These are keepers. Um, things you'll want to look for, you know, you want a nice, you know, you want to make sure everything's filled out around the top of the bullet, the base, you want nice square bases, you know, filled out all the way around. You want sharp drive bands, your grease grooves, you know, use this wad cutter. I didn't cast these yesterday, but as an example, you see all bearing surfaces, your drive bands, grease grooves are all good and sharp, your crimp groove, your base. It's properly filled out. It's 357. It came from yesterday. And it's got a beveled base, so it won't be square like this. But it's it's all the way around. It's properly filled out. Here's a 45. See everything's nice filled out on it. Hopefully, all of your bullets will turn out like this. Um, proper mold fill out. Add some tin. Alloy, uh, alloy temperature, make sure your mold's up to temperature. Clean your mold cavities. Um, you know, I use distill, uh, denatured alcohol on a Q-tip and clean, clean my cavities out. You know, a brand new mold, I'll start with a toothbrush and some Dawn dish detergent under hot water and I'll scrub it and then before I cast, I'll do the denatured alcohol. Now, some people I've heard use mineral spirits, but I've had good luck with denatured alcohol. Another thing you know, I mentioned yesterday, and I'll mention it again, that helps mold fill out. Now, a lot of people don't do this with aluminum molds, and that's smoking your mold. You can use a butane lighter, wood match. Um, I use either one. Yesterday on that video, I was using a butane lighter, but wood matches are good. It just gives you a good uh, carbon, a carbon coating in your cavities, and that, that can help with bullet release. If your bullets fall free from the mold, but I haven't know. Hopefully this video has been of some help to you in sorting your bullets.